Jesus, so good to have all of you with me in this uh, live webcast, which would be a uh, midnight service for the people in the United States. Uh, we, we, well, we've been into, into the new year for about seven hours, and uh, man, I've had a wonderful year so far. I can say I've had a wonderful year, you know, and uh, you don't have to be scared of 2015. It's, um, it looks good. God hasn't changed. And that is the message that I have for you guys. Uh, every new year I say this and I'm just going to say it again. Uh, God is not going to change. The same God that had the foreknowledge of Jesus Christ, that came to sancti sanctify us in the Spirit, that has begotten us unto a living hope, is uh, the God of 2015. Uh, the Lord that has provided for you up until today uh, is the same God that will continue to provide for you in this year to come. The, the God that gave His Son 2,000 years ago, He doesn't uh, slumber, nor does He sleep. He is alive, He is well, and He is, um, is, is, is quick over His Word to see it manifest in your life. And um, 
you know, I want to just talk a little bit about what the Word of God is for 2015 and then a little bit about uh, the, you know, Dynamic Love Web Church and our Web Fellowship and uh, what we are planning for next year. But let us just pray together. Father, thank you so much for the privilege of gathering together around your gospel, ending one year, going to the next year. There's nothing special about um, having a message this time. This is not what guarantees us that this year will be blessed because we started in a beautiful way. What guarantees us blessedness in this year? What guarantees us your fruit and um, victory over the flesh is Jesus, the final word. Thank you for that, Father. I thank you for everybody that has um, put this time aside to slot in to hear this message. Thank you for this wonderful fellowship, Lord. Amen. Well, um, if we look, I've, I've seen Dawn has put up a, um, a, a video about the Word of God, and she basically just took my message. And, uh, well, that's good, you know, at least I get the opportunity to preach it in 2015 before any of you guys. Um, <laughs> Congratulations with that word on what a good word. Um, what I what I want to say is that the word of God for 2015 is the message of Jesus Christ, and it is Jesus, who He is at the right hand of the Father, is the hope we can have for 2015. And I'm going to just read it from. Um, let me see. I, I don't even know if I. No, that is the communion. We're going to do that last. Um, we're going to. Yeah, I'm just going to read it right here. I didn't set it up. So that you can show the screen. It says here in verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His mercies, has regenerated us again, or has begotten us again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us unto an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and unfading, reserved in heaven for you by the power of God, having been kept through the faith to a salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. Now, uh, you know, I was reading that and I was thinking of those words, and I mean, it's quite some big words, and a fisherman wrote that. Peter, that couldn't read or write. You know, he, um, he wrote that. Uh, uh, you know, he went and met with Jesus. After he met with Jesus, there was such a passion in his heart that he said, I need to learn how to write, that I can write down what is inside my heart that I can write down this message, this eternal Word of God, which is the Word of 2015. I want to tell you that I've got tremendous peace about the fact that um, the God of 2014 is also the God of 2015, which was the same God of 2013 and 2012. Because all those years, I just experienced love and peace and joy. I experienced um, just who he, who he is in the midst of tribulation. He's even the God of 2008. And 2008 was a very bad year for us, um, financially and all those kind of things. But the God that cared for us in 2008, when we lost basically all of our support, that was alive when uh, the the big economic breakdown came. Uh, you know, the one that gave me peace in that time, the one that smiled over my life when I had nothing, you know, or had less. Um, you know, the God that cared. It's the same God of 2015, the one that will be with us, the one that will care for us, the one that smiles over our life. He is the one that the Apostle uh, Peter here wrote about that caused such great excitement that he said, I need to write down the hope that I have for the future. And that's what I'm going to preach on in 2015. 2015, I'm going to focus the ministry about the Word of God, the, the eternal message of God seated at the right hand of the Father and how that pertains to our flesh. Uh, that pertains to our human body. You know, last night, <coughs> the maybe two hours of sleep I had, or three hours of sleep I had, uh, it, it was, um, I had a dream. And in this dream, I dreamt where I speak to people about the human body. And I spoke to people about um, how God loves the human body. And uh, the value of the human body and the blessed hope we have for our bodies, which I will explain in short today. 
uh, to the point that we don't just love uh, um, ourselves in the spirit, but where we can love ourselves, spirit, soul, and body, where we can um, see the power of God towards our human body, where we can understand uh, salvation uh, as pertaining to the human body. And that is what I'm going to preach on in 2015. And um, guys, I know that some of the stuff I'm going to say in the, in the year to come is going to be challenging, uh, but we want to preach the gospel. We want to preach the message of salvation. The message of salvation is not defined inside the parameters of financial provision and just health. Uh, salvation is defined in, uh, the, in Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father as the final word about us and as the blessed hope that we can have. We can have an expectation every day that what is true in the Trinity um, is true in us and shall manifest as true in us. And that is God's word. Let us just look at Peter here again. He says in verse 3, he says, um, this is 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to His great mercies, has regenerated us again to a living hope. He has begotten us again, or we are born again unto a living hope. How are we begotten unto this living hope? Through the resurrection. Through the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ from the dead so he says here that through the resurrection we were begotten unto a living hope through the resurrection when Jesus Christ was resurrected what happened we saw a human conquer death we saw a human conquer the consequences of sin we saw a man greater than death. We saw a human conquering the sting of death. And we see that death holds no power over a human being anymore. And this is what it means. It means that sin's power, um, th that a human being has attained, a a has come to a place where he's greater than the power of sin, where he's greater than the power of uh, a sin in the flesh, and where he's greater than death, and where that man was raised up to be seated at the right hand of the Father as a human being. And this is the Apostle Peter, just a simple fisherman, you know, that got a wonderful revelation. And this is what he decided to write down so that we can have hope for the next year. And what is our hope? Listen to this. He says here, he says, um, who has according to his great mercy, he has regenerated us again or begotten us again unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. What is this living hope? When Christ was raised up from the dead, alive by the resurrection power of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, that truth is our hope. That is what we can confidently expect on account of the very same Spirit indwelling us. So when we believe upon the Father and we enter into the Spirit of the Trinity, which is the Spirit of Christ, which is the truth, Jesus Christ is the Spirit of the Gospel. He is the Spirit around which everything resolves. And I want to define the Spirit. The Spirit around uh, which, uh, uh, the Spirit um, which everything re revolves around is the truth about a human seated at the right hand of the Father that has conquered sin in the flesh, that has conquered death, and that is the message that God has for us. That is the Word of God for 2015. So, and that is the same word for 2016, 2017. It's the same word which was from the beginning, you know, which was manifested as and became true in uh, uh, um, in the resurrection of Christ, in the incarnation, death and resurrection, which is the word for us today. So, 
what we can have and what we can see is the word of our acceptance, the word of our perfection, the word of how a, a man has conquered, a man as high priest, as the word about us, has conquered sin and death so that we can have a confident expectation that we will see the fruit of the Spirit in our life where I can see in 2015 I've got this excitement in my heart that in 2015 I'm going to see more of the fruit of the Spirit in my life than ever before. You know, because I can just find how my heart has been persuaded about the Spirit. How my mind gets, uh, you know, just thinking about the Spirit all the time. Revolving around the Spirit of God, which is the Lord. The Bible says the Lord is the Spirit. The Spirit of my innocence. The Spirit of the victory that has come for mankind in the resurrection. And that is the message and the hope I have for 2015. And whatever power... Can can come from that. From there is the power for my provision. From there is the power for uh, for my peace. From there is the power for my joy. From there is the power from where I would love people. From there is my expectation towards my own physical body, uh, towards my marriage, and all those kind of things. That is what we have. Uh, the Word of God for us. The Word of God for us is Jesus Christ. So, um, in uh, Web Church in 2015, that is what we're going to preach about. That's what I'm going to preach about. I know I've had people tell me, Bertie, you know, veer away from that message. You know, it is a very controversial message. It might sound, you know, as if you say we can live immortal today and all those kind of things. People, I don't care how it's going to sound. I just care for the truth. And I want what made the Apostle Paul write in the first five um, in, in the first five uh, um, verses, write about the importance of the living hope. He has begotten us unto a living hope. And if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead indwells you, meaning if, we, if I can believe in the Spirit of a man sitting at the right hand of the Father in this truth, and that truth indwells my heart, and I've got the Holy Spirit inside my heart, the very same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies. What that means is that even if you would die in this year to come. Your body shall be quickened in the resurrection of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Should Christ return in this life, in, in this year, we will find the Spirit of God in our inside us, quicken our mortal body, change us into immortal human beings where we experience the same life that is experienced by Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Should Jesus not return or should you live to see 2016, what shall happen? We shall see in this life the fruit of this Spirit manifesting in us wherein we find effortless change, effortless life, effortless joy, effortless fruit of the Spirit, an overwhelming love for ourselves and others, an overwhelming love for the kingdom of God. We would find generosity that we've never known. We, we would find a love and a passion come forth in our heart like we've never seen because we are seeing deeper and deeper into this truth. We are seeing the Spirit of God. We are living by the Spirit of God and that's how we have life. Glory to God. You know, last night, uh, you know, people invited us to go. And I just want to keep, keep track of the time. Uh, last night, people invited us. And um, what was so nice was the last 45 minutes of last year, I could sit and share the gospel with people that I've never met in my life. You know, because they invited friends over as well and everything and, and, and some of their neighbors and people that I've never met in my life. And I could share the gospel of grace with them. And I could end last year, you know, entering the new year, sharing the gospel of grace, having such a compassion and a love for people wherein I can see the fruit of the Spirit in my life where I can see a person not as bad but as good where I can look at people the way God looks at them and where I could see this old guy you know um, just so touched by the love of God 
touched by the grace of God. And I could see, he says, Amen. You know, we, you know, this is, we, this is a, a, like a brand new gospel. This is, this is the truth that we, that we need to hear. Um, and he, he said that when he became older, he realized, you know, that things can't always be as he thought it would. And that is how the Holy Spirit was already working in his heart. But that is the wonderful thing that I want to share with you. In this year to come, what we can expect is for God not to change, to be the same. Nothing's going to change in the year to come. What I mean by that is the principle by which you're going to have life is not all of a sudden going to become the law. So lean towards grace. Be engulfed in the grace of God, in the love of God. You know, He loves you. He cares for you, and that's what we can expect in 2015. We, we can expect that God will not become a legalist in the year to come. We can expect that in this year to come, God's not going to change His mind, and all of a sudden, tithing is now going to become the way unto financial prosperity. You know, we, God's not going to change His mind about you. His final mind, His final word, His final thought about you, which was the first thought, is Jesus. Glory to God. Let us take this year and say, Father, this year I make myself available to live in this reality as you live in this reality. Amen. Well, we're going to take communion together. Um, it's three minutes before the new year. And I want to say to you, a Happy New Year, friends. And I just believe that in Dynamic Love Web Church, we're going to just um, experience so much of His goodness this year. Uh, the goodness that has always been available for us. We're going to experience the unchanging God. Glory to God. Um, in this year to come, we're going to just see um, that which God envisioned for us in the fruit of the Spirit, that love come forth effortlessly as it has come forth in this past year. Glory to God. Uh, when we take the bread and we break it, we celebrate the eternal Word of God seated at the right hand of the Father for us. And when we take the wine and we drink it, we drink it in remembrance of His death and we acknowledge His death, that the lawman has died and that we are begotten unto a new and living hope. And that in this year to come, we will just see, not because it's a special year, but where we make ourselves available, where we say, Father, we are only available for this. We're not available for anything else. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let us have our communion together, um, you know, as we enter this uh, brand new year 2015. And I want to tell you, uh, my prayer for you is that in 2015, we will, you, you will just see health, you will see uh, blessedness, and should something happen in your life where you don't see everything as blessed and, and all those kind of things, you will live far above that on account of the life of the Spirit inside you. I want to say this to you. The peace we have for 2015 is not that we have a God that will give us all our worldly things we need. It's that we have a God that loves us. He's our daddy, he's our Abba, and, and, and he's the, the name Abba, the name Father, is the final word about us. Blessed 2015, let's have our communion together, and after the communion, I'm going to pray for you guys, and uh, if, if the Lord's got some prophetic words that He want to speak through me for some of you guys watching, I would like to do that as well. So let's enjoy our communion. Let me
Well, glory to God. It's wonderful to know that we are not alone and uh, we enter this year. So, well guys, welcome to 2015. It's the 1st first, first of January uh, in the United States now, for those of you that are watching from the US. Uh, you know, I've, I just know that this year is going to be awesome for you. Let me pray for you and, um, you know, let's see if, if the Lord has got some prophetic word that wants to speak through me. If there is, I will speak. If there's not, then, uh, then we're just going to pray. Right. Father, I want to thank you so much for every person that is watching today. I want to thank you for the love that you have and your hands that is extended towards us. I thank you, Father, that we can <clears throat> go into this year with a boldness because of you. I thank you, Father, that when I look at <clears throat> all the things that must happen in 2015, if I just think of myself, where I must preach, all the traveling that must take place and all those kind of things. I can just say thank you, Father, that um, you have a living hope for every person. And you want every person to hear about that. You want people to know this truth. And thank you, Lord, that we as a web fellowship can gather around at midnight um, in the U.S. at last night when we gathered at midnight in South Africa, gather around your gospel knowing that this is our hope. This is the truth about us, wherein we can now come. And Father, this is what I want to do, and this is what I feel in my heart. I want to come as the pastor of Dynamic Love Web Church, with the web pastors that are watching, and everyone that's slotted in. We want to just say, our lives is available for the resurrection power of Christ. We are not aiming for death. We are aiming for life. We are expecting your return. We are expecting glorified human bodies in your return. And thank you, Father, that we can now relate to ourselves in a way where we can love ourselves, spirit, soul, and body, where we don't detest our body or our flesh, but where we know this is the temple of God. This is holy. It's a place where God chose to dwell, and it will, it, we will receive that immortality even manifesting in our human flesh. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray for the web pastors of Dynamic Love Web Church. I thank you, Father, that they are strengthened, they are encouraged by your word. I want to thank you, Father, for everything they've done in the past year and um, in this year to come. Father, I want to thank you for the love they have for people. I want to thank you for the embrace that I can see, your warm embrace through them towards, towards everybody here, including myself. Thank you for that, Father. I want to pray for them. I thank you, Father, they are strengthened in this year to come by your Spirit. And that you, I thank you that you are the, the same word of 2014 is the word for them in 2015. I want to pray for our, or all our members. I thank you, Lord, that they are loved. I thank you, Lord, that in this year to come, that they will just see the, the fruit of the Spirit 
manifest in their lives. I thank you, Lord, that they will have such an experience of the real them and the real you inside them that they will stand amazed at what you got right effortlessly in their life. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you that they can, uh, their eyes can be opened to who they are and who you are more and more in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to pray for all those that will still join our fellowship. Thank you, Lord, that they are on their way to hear the good news and have great fellowship around your gospel. Thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are such a good God. Father, if you want to just speak through me, I'm open to, um, to, to share your, your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just feel, <clears throat> you know, uh, especially the people in the United States, and this can be true for other people as well, because a lot of the stuff revolves around this, is that, church, let us not be afraid about wars and rumors of wars. Let us not be afraid um, about Muslims. Let us not have the, in this year to come, let us not give the news a big, the news and CNN and BBC and all those things a big place in our heart. For that is not the word about you, says the Lord. Let us not be afraid. Let us not be afraid about our financial situation. Let us not be afraid about our children and our grandchildren. For I am the Lord God and I've cared for you and I will continue to care for you. Listen to me. Hear my word and you will see life and peace and joy in the midst of a world full of turmoil. I love the world, says the Lord, and I want to see salvation come to them. There are millions of people that are calling upon me, that has answered the inner call wherein I've spoken in their hearts. And I will make use of all those that are available to, um, to bring my message to them. And I will make use of you. And um, I also feel the Lord says that He will make use of you in ways that you have not expected. And in, in simple ways where you thought, well, I thought that I just said something very small to somebody. But the testimony has come that it changed his life. I'm thinking of that now. And I'm thinking of a great example. The people that I visited last night said to me that I preached in a church years ago. And what, when I preached there she and her husband got saved she didn't put up her hand nothing but they received jesus and their life completely changed in the very same way effortlessly my children you will impact others as i live in you glory to god father i want to thank you for your greatness i want to thank you for for um just for your goodness that you have towards us thank you lord thank you lord i also see that um, in, in this year, there's somebody watching right now that you feel your marriage um, is not going to be restored and you are thinking of getting divorced and, um, uh, uh, you know, just getting out of the whole thing. You think it's never going to, uh, 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 it cannot be restored. I feel the Lord says in this year, your marriage shall be restored. It shall be restored. Not because of a special year, but because your heart and her heart will be opened for the gospel. And I will be able to live in both of you. Thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just feel the Lord puts upon my heart again. Let us not, church, in this year to become, be led by politics. Let us not be led by church politics. Let us not be led by the politics of a country, about rumors of wars, fear, um, you know, uh, financial instability, and all those kind of things. I feel the Lord says there's been much worse times on the earth than this year that's going to come. And in this year that's going to come, I am the same God. And have absolute rest and enjoy me. I feel the Lord says, set this year apart and say, in this year, my mind and my life is available. 
is available for the life of God. And I just see, see the Lord just um, so excited, like a mature father, so excited to see that uh, in silent satisfaction uh, bringing life to you um, like you've never seen before. Not because it's a special year, but because we've come to a place in our heart where our hearts would just allow more of the goodness of God. Amen and amen. So, well, my word, the word for, the, for this year is Jesus Christ. And interpreted and put down simply is God is not going to change. You can expect the good, good God that you've seen in 2014 to continue to be good to you in this year to come. Glory to God. Guys, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. I also thought of just thanking everybody that is faithfully sponsored dynamic love ministries and uh, sponsored our web fellowship we um, you know financially it's going well with us uh, and we can reach people I want to thank you for just your faithfulness and just being part of this ministry uh, wherein you have uh, throughout this year just uh, paid for plane tickets um, I mean the rent for places where we, um, I could love, we could reach out, we could give a lot of money away in helping people. Um, you know, we could start the web church, we could, um, you know, there's just so many things that could take place, so many people's lives that could be impacted. And I want to thank you for that. It just enables Helena and I to, um, to minister the gospel, to preach the gospel, enables me to spend time studying the word, pondering upon the word, reading, uh, thinking about the gospel, where I don't have to think about business, where I don't have to think about all those things. And I want to just thank the people, some of the people that are watching that have supported me for 20 years. Um, thank you so much for your faithfulness financially towards this ministry. Uh, you know, I don't talk a lot about money. I don't even thank people that give, uh, you know, uh, publicly like this. Uh, but I just failed to do this. Thank you so much for just who you are. I'm looking forward to a time of, um, you know, a great family time. Uh, when I'm, I'll be in, in Europe this year. Um, I'll also be in the United States this year. I, I think we're going to do, I don't know if it's six countries in Europe or something. We, um, there's a lot of stuff coming up for Europe. Uh, the United States, I'll be there in May. Um, I'll put up the itinerary. I'm so excited to meet with you guys and just have our web family come together and just see each other in the physical, shake one other's hand, give a hug, give a kiss, you know, and just say, you know, here I am in, you know, in, in the physical, this is who we are. Uh, I'm so looking forward to that. Thank you so much, guys, and just have a blessed year. You are the blessed of God. Amen.